Hey folks, welcome back. It's Chris with Seal Boss. Uh, just in our prior segment, we had an overview of the 495, and now we're going to tackle a quick topic that's everyone's favorite, and that's the cleaning of the machine. The steps to clean these machines are very, very basic, but it's very imperative that you follow these steps. It'll give you the best fighting chance at having a machine that's going to last you a while and also be ready from job to job. Our cleaning on all of our machines is a two-step process, okay? And it's not one step, but rather two, and it goes a little something like this. At the end of any given shift or any period where you know you're going to have downtime, uh, what you're going to want to do specifically for the 495 is take your feed hose and put it in a large bucket of xylene, okay? Now, if you can't get access to xylene, we understand. There are some environmental restrictions uh, based on wherever you're located throughout the country that will either allow you access to xylene or not. Other solvents can and will work. If you have any question, folks, about what will and what won't work, just give us a call. We're here to help you out. That's going to be 714-662-4445 or hop online at sealboss.com. Get us a customer request form. We'll be happy to address that. We'll get right back to you and address your uh, issue in terms of what solvents are good and bad for the machine. At any rate, um, two-step process again. Solvent first. Again, xylene. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our feed hose. We're going to have a, a bucket of xylene handy. We're going to take that hose. We're going to put that in that bucket of solvent. We're going to run our machine just the exact same way as we would as though we're injecting urethane. So... Touching on some uh, parts and pieces from the last video, the overview, we want to make sure our pressure knob is in a fully increased position. So that's clockwise on this knob over here. We're obviously going to be plugged in, so we're going to be hooked up to power. We want to keep our uh, prime and spray knob in that spray position. So we want to have that tab in a horizontal orientation, and then we're going to obviously want to turn our machine on. Have your nozzle pointed at a waste bucket, okay? Very important, gloves and safety goggles. Anytime you're dealing with materials and or cleaners or solvents, very, very important. You don't want any splashback, so safety is always paramount. So we'd be drawing the xylene through the system. We'd obviously have our valve open, and we would be, we would be shooting that xylene into a waste bucket. Now, oftentimes the question comes up, how much xylene? It depends on really how much you've got in any given hose length and what we're truly doing with the xylene cycle is we're picking it up here at the feed hose, we're running it through here, we're cleaning this, we're putting it in through the machine, we're cleaning the innards of the machine as well, the conveyance mechanism that's inside of here, and then we're also, we're blasting out any remaining urethane, like 1510, 1570, that's left in the hose. So it shouldn't take a lot of xylene to purge the system, because that's really what we're doing with the solvent cycle. We're going to be purging out, and when we start to see xylene coming out of the end of our coupler clear, we're good. Now it's time to go to step two, and that is using the R70, the R-70 by Sealboss. That is a proprietary blend of lubricants and conditioners that really are being used to simply chase remaining xylene now out. So it's kind of a chasing match. Your xylene is chasing out residual urethane. Your R70 is chasing out residual xylene, then you're done. Folks will often ask, can I leave the R70 in here or should I then chase that with xylene? Go ahead and leave the R70 in there. Close your valve so you don't have a mess. Again, that R70 is a lubricant and a conditioner, so it's only going to help your pump. It's only going to go ahead and lubricate the innards, the gaskets, the seals to that mechanism. So that's, that's purging. So again, two steps, xylene cycle, R70 cycle. Now. One common thing uh, that can help you out, if you do that and you realize that you're still not getting on your next go and injecting, you're still not getting draw, you're still not getting pickup, sometimes what can happen is you can wind up with cured material on a mechanism that's just on the inside at the bottom of this. So there's a little clamp that I just released. It's, it's almost like a, a little... D-ring is not quite it, but it's, it's a little clamp on both sides. You just pinch it, and it allows you then to take the feed hose out of the bottom of the machine, all right? So when you do that, you can see here, if you have anything on the, on the rim of the feed hose assembly, you can scrape that out gently with a tool, put that feed hose aside, 
And then on the underneath the machine, you'll see this silver cylinder. Now, <clears throat> you're going to need a pair of channel locks or a larger type of a wrench to go ahead and get a grip on this. But what you can do is a ball that I'm actually touching with the end of my finger right here. If you want to work that ball back and forth with your finger or a screwdriver, again, make sure you have gloves on. You can do that, and a lot of times that will free that ball up and you'll be able to go ahead and uh, inject. Because what that ball is actually doing with each cycle is it's seeding and deseeding. So it's getting that pressure built up in the machine to convey the material out the hose. If you want, and you really want to get into it, you can take this actual cylinder off. So you can see the flat end here, 180 degrees on the other side is another flat end. You get your wrench on there, you break that free, and you very gently start to loosen that off and remove that. You'll reveal a ball in a cage that actually, that cage looks like a set of crosshairs into which that ball kind of nests. If there's built up material on either the cage or the ball, Get your rag with some xylene on it or any type of a solvent and clean that ball till it's squeaky clean and make sure that any residual chunks or particles of urethane that have been stuck there from prolonged use are free and clear. That will enable you to go ahead and have that nice seal as that uh, machine strokes back and forth that will enable you to build the pressure and ultimately inject. So between the uh, one-two process on the general cleaning and this little tip and trick with the ball and cage, you should be well on your way to having a clean machine for injection in the future. Thanks for tuning in. We're here to help you. Work safe. Have a great day.